You might not want to think about it, but some pretty shady stuff goes on behind the scenes at fast food restaurants, and these workers are ready to spill. From sketchy food prep practices to dirty equipment, these confessions might make you think twice about hitting up that drive through again. Delicious fast food doesn't just rain from the heavens like gifts from the gods of fat, salt, and sugar. It's made by the hopefully washed hands of hard-working, underpaid employees who know all the gruesome details about how the sausage is made. Most customers like to keep their heads in the sand when it comes to how their meals are prepared because, honestly, the less you know, the better. Which leads us to some unfortunate insider info about Taco Bell. As one Taco Bell employee expressed on Reddit, people might want to stay away from anything on the menu that involves meat, which is basically everything. You do not want to see how the meat comes into the store. The meat we use for the tacos and other things comes in big plastic bags labeled suitable for human consumption. They smell absolutely awful until we put the seasonings in. Another former employee dished that they sometimes used meat after its expiration date. So the next time you run for the border, don't be surprised if you also have to run for the bathroom. Ay, ay, ay. One word no one wants to ever hear in a restaurant is infestation. Any pest is a nuisance, but there's one bug that's a cut above the rest. The mighty cockroach. A creature so fierce that even nuclear explosions can't stop it. Nuclear radiation, a mere gentle kiss upon my back. I cannot die, for I am death! As dark as that sounds, the poetic little bugger is right, and Starbucks learned it the hard way. Despite its powerful presence across the world, the coffee giant is still privy to the mayhem-inducing woes of roach takeovers. And one ex-employee had a particularly nightmarish experience. The traumatized barista dished on Reddit. They were everywhere. The pastry case, in the storage, around the dry powders. But the most horrific sight, according to the informant, was that one of the roaches crawled out of a coffee machine's spout. And you definitely don't want your grande half-calf skinny latte flavored with a sprinkling of roasted cockroach residue. Unfortunately, all pests enjoy snacking as much as humans do. And there's one place where they can always find an all-you-can-eat buffet, and it can't be avoided, especially in restaurants. Now, more than ever, restaurants are catering to guests with a wide range of dietary preferences, but there's still plenty of misunderstandings between two major groups of customers. Some carnivores have a tough time accepting that anyone wouldn't want a huge, juicy steak served to them. But then again, some hardcore vegetarians have no idea how someone could sleep at night knowing their dinner was once an innocent, defenseless animal that wanted nothing more than to graze in peace. Recently, one anonymous ex-employee of A&W divulged a secret that perfectly illustrates this divide and at the same time will make every vegetarian gasp in shock. The legendary fast food restaurant has been serving veggie burgers for quite some time, but as the informant said on Reddit, veggie burgers were grilled on the same grill as the meat and were often cooked in the grease of other burgers. Of course, it was only trace amounts of beef, but try telling that to an angry vegetarian and see what happens. What are you, a nut? I'm a vegetarian! One Redditor who works at an undisclosed eatery admits there's a shady reason behind those suggestions at their place of business. The anonymous tipster wrote, Whenever we have ingredients that are going to expire or just expired, we tell our cashiers to subtly promote certain foods when a customer seems unsure about what to buy. So the next time a friendly person behind the counter tries to push a side order on you, just know that it might not be because they themselves are truly addicted to the stuff. I do not work with junkies. The reason for their enthusiastic recommendation is because that day's favorite dish is probably from yesterday. And like many aging flavor sensations, it's been mutating on a molecular level and taken on a life of its own. Those golden arches of McDonald's seem to tug at our tummies every time we look at them, even if we're not in the mood for a quick, cheap meal. Maybe it's our appetite's devil urging us to give in to the diet-breaking delights of fast food or the nostalgia of those childhood Happy Meals. Either way, if that urge hits, one employee implores customers to order with extreme caution when it comes to the Mick Cafe. According to their testimonials on Reddit, they make sure everyone that matters to them never orders anything that flows out of a Mick Cafe machine. And coming from a current McDonald's employee, that's a pretty cold thing to say. Colder than a South Pole streaker. So what kind of disgusting buildup occurs inside the machine? The Mickey D's insider went on to say, A couple of times, I stuck my hand in the machine to pull out a literal fistful of black soot. The insides are caked with it. The lines where the product comes out as well. 
As horrible as that sounds, the innards of the smoothie machine also belong far away from the human stomach. The same employee said, The McDonald's I'm at now also has us cleaning the smoothie machine with glass cleaner. Those golden arches seem a lot more tarnished now, and that's one stain even Windex will never be able to buff out. During those frigid days of winter, when it feels like Jack Frost has wrapped you in a blanket of ice, nothing satisfies quite like a hearty bowl of chili. Lots of fast food restaurants serve this classic comfort food, but Wendy's has marketed their chili as a delicious cure for the winter blues. However, once you hear how they create this meaty concoction, you'd happily brave the frozen tundra just to escape the smell of it. <laughs> It's not so much the recipe as it is the gnarly method of preparing the chili. One ex-employee describes the horrendous procedure in vivid detail on Reddit, saying, It's made from dried up, leftover hamburger meat. It sits in bags of its own grease in the freezer for God knows how long, until it's pulled out and boiled. Then it's mixed with giant cans of beans and tomatoes that smell like vomit, and boiled again for hours. Now, if you think you've heard the worst of it, prepare yourself because there's one more bit of information that the chili informant went on to spill. Whatever wasn't used at the end of the night was poured back into vats and stored in the walk-in until it would be reheated in the morning. So basically, that steaming cup of chili you just ordered might have been hot, cold, stored, and restored many times before it finally reaches your taste buds. No! There are times when a basic cheese pizza is all you need to be satisfied, and there's no reason to shell out any extra cash for more toppings. Other times, the idea of a pie loaded with pepperoni, sausage, green peppers, and olives is so enticing that you don't mind spending more. But at Little Caesars, something smells a little fishy about their pricing policy for additional toppings. One Redditor who worked at a location in Washington thought it was strange that the cheese pizza and the pepperoni pizza both cost $5.99. How could you charge the exact same price when one pizza clearly has a meaty topping? According to the restaurant's manager, it's that way because the customers are informed that more cheese is added onto the cheese pizza. But is that really the case? The former employee responded, This was a blatant lie, as we put equal amounts of cheese on all the pizzas. The cheese is added before any other toppings, so you don't really know which ones are going to be baked as pepperoni. We hate to think that there's anything devious going on at the headquarters of Little Caesars, but something about their pizza pizza pricing doesn't add up. Oh well, at least they didn't rub it in our faces. Only a dummy would pay more for less toppings. As much as the words health department make managers panic, their existence is vital when it comes to safety. Every meal needs to be prepared by employees wearing hats or hairnets, and all food items must be properly stored in approved sanitary receptacles. Every square inch of the restaurant falls under the microscopic eye of these serious professionals, and they'll try their hardest to find even the smallest infraction. During one surprise visit to a KFC, the health department stumbled upon an infraction that would have given the colonel plenty of sleepless nights. According to a Redditor, there was a dead rat at the bottom of one of the fryers. The Sanitary City Council group came to do a six-month checkup and found it. They came to the realization that it had been there for quite some time. Needless to say, the place was shut down immediately. But the larger question remains, how does a rat magically fall into a deep fryer? Was this an accident or sabotage? Like many of the universe's great mysteries, this one may never be solved. There's got to be an explanation. Oh, I don't know. I think some things are better left unexplained. Usually on the first day of a job or during that dreaded training period where you walk behind a seasoned employee and awkwardly shadow them, a new recruit will be informed about the company's rules and regulations. The strictness of the criteria varies from place to place, but there are always some staple expectations. Dress appropriately, don't arrive late, don't tell customers what you're actually thinking. Do you want me to hold the spit? Haha, <laughs> just kidding, officer. And most importantly, keep drugs as far away from the premises as possible. It's puff puff pass, not puff puff work. However, some employees might have had other things on their mind when that rule was discussed. One person who used to work for Domino's Pizza confessed to lighting up before nearly every pie-slinging shift. The chillaxed employee bluntly admitted on Reddit, I was always high when I worked for Domino's. 
It's bad enough that this cashier was standing glazed-eyed behind the register, but you won't believe who was providing him with the devil's lettuce. It turns out that his supervisor was redefining the meaning of supply chain and selling sticky icky to members of his own team. When it sounds like a mellow workplace where nothing is likely to go wrong, you might want to think twice about ordering from Domino's. Under these conditions, you could get a pizza with a few extra ingredients, and who knows how you might react to them. Ice, the cornerstone of any drink you intend on keeping cold while you're in a hot car. Believe it or not, there are some individuals who actually hate ice and prefer their beverages lukewarm. Most people, however, like to drop some frozen cubes into their sugary drink of choice, even though by the last sip it will be thoroughly watered down. But watered-down sodas aren't the only thing you need to worry about when it comes to ice. According to one Redditor, who's worked at multiple establishments, ice machines are, quote, rarely cleaned out, like almost never, bugs, dirt, food particles, whatever. The employee went on to say that when the unsanitary condition of the ice machine was brought to the attention of management, they brushed it off and said the employees should have better things to do than monitor the ice machine. But in truth, we would all love to have someone monitor the ice machine and ensure that our refreshing chilled beverages don't end up as rancid as some of our burgers. And seriously, do you really want flies with that order? There you go. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about fast food restaurants are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.